feel like something a little bit out of the ordinary, hot air ballooning, rafting down the Colorado River, maybe a safari, then you're part of the fastest growing segment of the travel industry, the adventure traveler. Well, this morning we'll look at one of the newest ways that some people are getting away from it all. this is not the South American Andes, it's Montana's Rocky Mountains. And in spectacular ranges like these, trekking with llamas has become the newest way for people to see the most remote wilderness areas, using animals that were bred to do this 5,000 years ago. These camels of the clouds, one of the world's oldest domesticated animals, were bred in Peru by the Incas for their meat, their wool, and as beasts of burden. One of the nice things about hiking with llamas is they don't intrude upon your experience of the wilderness, and if anything, they enhance it. It's been described as being followed by a 400-pound pussycat. They're so aware and so curious, they'll often see things long before you do, and their ears perk up and they're looking around, and, and they make you notice things that you might otherwise have missed. Come on, llamas! <laughs> Hey, Lamas. Sue Rolfing and her husband Steve fell in love with these exotic creatures seven years ago. What began as a hobby has become the Great Northern Llama Company, a business that's allowed them a rather idyllic life raising llamas and children and getting other people interested in the animals and the wilderness by running pack trips for the adventurers. The area that we do the trips in is kind of a special area because it's really relatively unknown. We often do five-day trips without seeing another soul up there. I've gone whole summers without seeing another soul. The kind of people that go on our pack trips are a little bit offbeat in the first place to do something like this, something different. They're very adventuresome. I'd say about 50% of them are hikers, but I've had folks who've never hiked or camped out before in their lives, so it's a whole new experience for them. I had never been around llamas before, and I was a little curious as to what they would be like. They've really been really neat. Be around llamas is sort of like uh, dragging a little kid along. Sometimes they follow and sometimes they don't. The first one behind me is named Poncho, and he's sort of the person who always wants to keep going. So he's sort of like a hurry-up personality. Houdini doesn't have much of personality, he just sits around, eats a lot of grass, and he's just sort of a hang around sort of person. Well, they're grand animals. They're just uh, so curious and so sure-footed. Uh, in fact, they're so, cu so curious and sure-footed, I think they probably saw more of the scenery than I did in some cases where it was really dangerous to walk along, maybe, but uh, they're uh, uh, just very strong animals, and you feel like they can handle anything. All this darker stuff is snow from last year. It's been laying in here, and the whiter stuff is this year's snow. Yeah, so it's two years old. The advantage is you can take a lot of things that you normally wouldn't carry on your own back. Uh, the foods can be fresh foods. You can take along a cold six-pack of beer or a bottle of wine. Uh, deluxe dinners, nice tents. Good job, Pancho. Making camp is the highlight of my day after a long hike. There's no doubt about it. I've never tasted food that's been any better, uh, whether it be vegetables or meats or whatever. It's been just fabulous. <laughs> I can't imagine. It's a four-star restaurant in the wild. That's strong enough. Antelope's strong enough. Yeah. I think for many people, our llama pack trips are an escape from the world that they live in on a day-to-day -day basis. Their needs are reduced to the very basics. They didn't worry about getting the car repaired or what's going on at the office or any of those things. It was just down to uh, getting their food and staying warm and uh, being in the high country and enjoying being up on the ridge tops on you know, virtually the top of the world and just experiencing the high that you get from being in that alpine country. Northern Llama Company is just one of about 25 outfitters uh, operating in the United States. And if llama trekking is gaining in popularity, so is raising llamas. Joining us this morning is Marty McGee, and, and this is Champagne. Mm -hmm. How old is Champagne? Champagne is two years old. Is this a basic average height, or is she exceptionally she's, large? Or? No, she's about average. Now, um, animals like Champagne have become more expensive here, haven't they? Yes, uh, breeding stock, there's a lot of demand, so breeding stock has gotten more expensive. But there are a lot of really nice animals out there for under $1,000 if you want a pet llama. 
you know, if you really want a llama, you can afford one, I think. Why would you want one? I mean, aside from just trekking, I mean, you can, you can keep the wool and it's a... You can use the wool, they can pull a cart, they can carry a pack, um, they can be your friend, they can go on walks with you, they can come in the house. I can't imagine uh, why you wouldn't want one, really. And we should note that this, this wool is, is uh, rather expensive, and your sweater is from Llama Wool, but right. it is not Champagne's coat. No, it is not. It's, it's from a llama named Andy, mm -hmm. a friend of hers. Is Champagne enjoying this? I, I think she is very much so. <laughs> can't tell. We can break the news anyway. Champagne's pregnant, right? Yes, Champagne is pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's due in May. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it. You're welcome. 56 past the hour. We're back in a moment. Here's Willard. <laughs> what a combination. Here's a word from Pantene. Llamas love it. Shampoo that really has conditioners. Serious care for beautiful hair.